Let's get on to Syria, fam. I don't know what happened here, but maybe you can give us a little insight. What's going on with the BBC accreditation? <laughs> What's going? I don't know what happened. You know, the BBC didn't like publicly make up entire uh, media packages and entire videos showing these fake chemical attacks that they tried to use to overthrow the uh, Syrian president. Right? That didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, so Syria revoked the BBC's accreditation and Syria did this for obvious reasons. Like I just mentioned, uh, they, 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 they don't want the BBC to continue spreading all of this information on their, uh, in their country. One, the United States and NATO are stealing their oil. They, they have been doing it for a long time. They are supporting and backing these white helmet radicals, actual radicals, and Russia is is there fighting with this with the Syrians, actual Syrians against this. So of course they're not going to uh, allow this. Now th I obviously have an opinion about this, and I separate this from any sort of uh, f free speech uh, saying that they're banning free speech because this is not free speech. We this is a this is a public relations agency, uh, the BBC. They are not a news outlet. They are just doing propaganda there, and they were responsible for a lot of this propaganda. And they went after people like Vanessa Bealy as well, uh, specifically. So a uh, serious ministry said that the broadcaster, and this is what they're saying, failed to adhere to professional standards. In uh, a recent BBC story linked the trade of an amphetamine called Captagon with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's family. The BBC said it provided impartial independent journalism. Um, and so Syria didn't agree. And um, the US, UK and the European government blamed Syria and the Syrian government for the production and export of this drug use and listed Assad's relatives as these key figures. And um, the the Syrian government did not specifically reference the Captagon report in its statement. It said that since Syria's civil war started in 2011, the BBC has occasionally provided subjective and fake information. Occasionally, yeah, right. So that they're being nice. So um, yeah, so there you go. So they they got their accreditation revoked and if you look at everybody that's been talking about it uh nobody's upset about this right so i i i said this and i want to hear your take on this i said good the bbc and cnn literally produce fake stories to push regime change they're doing it again in ukraine and again this is what they're doing in ukraine right and i said this isn't the free press this is public relations now so this is and then on the second tweet i kind of go on to explain right that these are the people that stood silent when people like Vanessa Bealy, who were exposing them, went out and, and actually did journalism during before anybody knew what was going on in Syria. She got it right from the start. Um, and I wanted I wanted to explain this because I know some people are going to say this is your your uh, to me you you don't understand then if if you think this is censorship because this is how I feel about other countries. Venezuela, Russia, Cuba, any country, especially more of the smaller countries that are extremely vulnerable to U.S. hegemony, when they are reacting to something that the U.S. is doing, the U.S. and, and NATO and Israeli, British intelligence as well, they weaponize the media that they own to use it to overturn governments and overturn regimes. It is not on the same level as when the United States literally bans and censors everybody who is an independent or who has a different narrative because they own the media. You can't you can't say that they're on equal footing. So to me, this is definitely a completely different situation. And I think Syria has the right to protect itself, just like Cuba, just like Venezuela, just like a bunch any other country uh, that is in a vulnerable position of being cooed by the United States, by these these powers and. It, because they're they're the ones in power. They're the ones that own the media. They they manipulate the narrative. And it's not the same to compare, uh, you know, Syria or especially Syria. I mean, it's it's a poor country. It's a country that's undergone a civil war. They're they're stealing their oil, and they they're in a very vulnerable position. 
And so I'm not going to judge them and say, well, they can't, you know, take away the BBC's accreditation because free speech. Uh, the BBC has been lying about them for for over a decade now. So you yeah. know what? Like they're going to do what they need to do. And and we need to we need to free our own media. We need to get our media back because we don't have real media anymore. The real media is this: the 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 uh, CNN, MSNBC, uh, all all those people, including the progressives, which are like inter, inter what is it like imploding? <laughs> That's been very fun to watch. They're imploding, right? Um, they they're not real. So so really, I I think that the fight is to fix our sh our stuff first right as oh. an american it's to fix our media to get our media yeah. back in control before we start criticizing what other countries do with their media well we we have to also understand that they're, they're not media right they're propaganda at this point they're just there to they're the stenographers and they're all paid by big pharma military industrial complex big tech Fam, let's talk about independent media here in the States, right? Let's talk about uh, something that uh, an, in an independent media show, The Convo Couch, who got put in the, the penalty box three years ago and demonetized, you know. But recently, you know, YouTube has mentioned that they're going to change their guidelines and allow people to talk about elections in a free and fair manner. So I went back to look at our monetization and our, our, our reinstatement when we reapplied, and they hadn't, meant, they hadn't looked at it for over six months. When they usually said it takes a month, but the other day they gave us an answer, fam. Let's take a look. So YouTube finally um, answered my last uh, accept my uh, application back for monetization. Uh, they finally responded. It only took six months. It usually takes a month, but they finally responded. But look what they said this time. Your channel wasn't accepted for mon monetization because. Harmful content. Sorry. Harmful contact. What harmful content does the combo couch put up? Elections, COVID information. Still doing it. They don't give a damn. So, fam, they're still doing the censorship okay. over here, right? They're still, like, demonetizing people. They won't let them get back on. They don't give you specific information you know we just reapplied i mean can you i still can't imagine it's still hard to imagine the fact that we've been demonetized for almost three years now going on that means we're not in the algorithm we don't get any help we don't get any recommended features we're just pretty much mm -hmm. just left out there to die and you know this is this is something that youtube has done and has gotten away with they killed uh any type of in in citizen journalist you know uh, any type of momentum that they've gotten They've just destroyed them. You know, they've, they've kneecapped people and ruined their livelihoods. And they haven't allowed for an arena of free media to take place. But yet, you know, th those people who control all the strings, whatnot, they, they want to be the propagandist and they want to go out and say stuff. And when they get censored or demonetized or spanked or, or just put in their place or just a, a light shined on what they're doing, they want to scream, oh, censorship and freedom of speech and all this other bullshit when it's clearly not the same uh, level playing field for them and independent media personalities. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, and I don't expect anything from YouTube. Like, that's the thing. Once they have you marked down, that's it. And anybody that's, an, uh, you know, like uh, talking, that's talked about these subjects when they weren't allowed to talk about them is somebody that's going to see things more thoroughly. And they, that's, you're a problem for the, the, the this establishment at that point because it, it's a lot easier to see things two three years after the fact and i'm not trying to be rude to people i'm just saying like there is a certain you know um crowd that's going to be allowed are people that were able to weasel through it because they weren't really on their radar and so you know unfortunately um when you are able to foresee things a lot more quickly then they're just going to cut that before anything. Yeah. So that's essentially what's happened. And um, yeah. yeah, we stuck I mean, our necks out cool. when it wasn't popular. You know what I'm saying? Right. When it was hard, right. when it was like, you can't talk about that. That's when we were talking about things out of the gate. Very proud of that. Very, very happy with the work we did in COVID and went back and watched a decent amount of these, these uh, of, uh, footages that some of the, the, the work we did. And we were out in front there. You know what I'm saying? We would, we did a really good job. 
uh, as far as leftists in the United States that, you know, understood what was going on, that followed it in real time. But the fact that we were following it in real time put us on the radar. And same thing with elections. And we've been spanked and, you know, suppressed ever since 